But I am mortal and liable to fall. Nay, my hand will support thee. Look beyond. What see you? Goodness, I see why I was a boy here. All of this I remember well. Your lip is trembling. And what is that upon your cheek? Lead on, spirit. I follow. You recollect the way? Remember it? The path of my boyhood? Why, I can walk it blindfold. Strange to have forgotten it for so many years. Strange. But let us go on. Ah, a school. Do you remember? But of course you do. Even though it is Christmas Eve, however, it is not quite deserted. A solitary child neglected by his friends is left there still. I know him all too well. My own lost boyhood. My lonely self. You recall this old brick schoolhouse with its weathercock and, bo and school bell hanging <coughs> from its roof? Look now. The walls are damp and mossy. The windows broken, the gates decay. Let us look within at the boy who still reads by the feeble fire. Poor boy. Poor lonely boy. news that she had persuaded my father to let me come home for Christmas. I thought I was to spend it alone at school. How she clapped her tiny hands and laughed when she said that he had sent a coach to fetch me, that we might all have a merry Christmas together. Did you go? Ah, yes. Merrily, with my trunk tied to the top of the chase and the quick wheels dashing through the snow. Your sister was always a delicate creature, whom her breath might have withered, but she had a large heart. So she did, Spirit. I won't deny it. God forbid. She died a woman and had, I think, one child? Yes, my nephew Fred. Shall we leave the boy at his desk? My poor forgotten self, as I used to be. Poor boy. What say you? I wish, but it's too late now. What is too late? Nothing. Well, last night a boy was singing Christmas carols at my door. I should like to have given him something, that's all. 
Let us see another Christmas. And so the spirit of Christmas past led old Scrooge down the memories of long ago, each separate experience recalling moments quite forgotten. Although they had just left the school behind them, they were now in the busy thoroughfares of a city. It was once again Christmas time, but it was evening and the streets were lighted up. Once again, Scrooge and the ghost stood side by side in the open air. My time grows short, observed the spirit. Look. And Scrooge looked, this time seeing himself as a man in the prime of life. He was not alone, but sat by the side of a young girl in mourning dress, in whose eyes there were tears which sparkled in the it light little to that you. shone forth from the ghost Very little. of Christmas past. Another idol has displaced me. But if it can cheer and comfort you in time to come, as I would have tried to do, then I have no just cause to grieve. What idol has displaced you? A golden one. This is the even hand dings of the world. There's nothing on which the world so hard as poverty, and there's nothing it professes to condemn with such severity as pursuit of wealth. Poor Ebenezer, you fear the world too much. All your hopes and dreams have merged into the one hope, and be me all in the chance of a sore of reproach. The reproach of poverty. I've seen your nobler aspirations fall, one by one, until the master passion gain engrosses you. Have I not? What then? Even if I have grown so much wiser since then, what then? I'm not changed toward you, am I? Our contract is an old one. Made when we were both poor, it content to be so. Until a good season, we can improve our worldly fortune by our patient industry. You were changed when it was made, Ebenezer. You were another man. I was a boy. Your own feelings tell you you are not the same. But I am. That which promised happiness when we were one in heart is fraught with misery now that we are two. How often and keenly I've thought of this, I will not say. It's enough that I've thought of it. It can release you. Have I sought release? In words? No. Never. In a changed nature, an altered spirit, in everything that made my love of any worth or value in your sight. Tell me, if this had never been before us, would you try to seek me out and win me now? No. You think not. I would gladly think otherwise if I could. Heaven knows I would. But if you were free today, Tomorrow, can even I believe that you would choose a dowerless girl, who you and your very confidence with her would weigh everything by gain, or even if you should? Do I not know the regrets would surely follow? I do.